Hi everybody, welcome back to HPE Discover 2024. We're here at the Venetian Conference Center. I'm Dave Vellante with Rob Strecce. Rob, it's been an amazing couple of days. We've been hanging out at the Sphere. My first time, you're a hundredth time. <laughs> you know, Rob, Rob loves con concerts. I love concerts. Yeah. I love li live music and I love that experience and just it's immersive. Experience but, yeah. and immersive are two operative yeah. words for this event. Yeah. Caroline Seymour is here. She's the Vice President of Storage Product Marketing at Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Jim Odoricio. Senior Vice President and GM, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Storage. Guys, welcome to the Thank Cube. You. It was great to see you both again. Hi, Dave, Rob. Good glad, to see you really again. Exciting glad to talking be here. storage. We, that's, yep. where, that's where we all started. Uh, we started anyway. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, so, welcome and take us back to April 2023. We did Storage Day, the big storage that's launch. Right. It was mm -hmm. amazing. Antonio invited us to the all hands meeting. We got to see up to Q&A, then they kicked us out, but that's okay. People were excited, the music was playing, and we saw a, a, a lot of momentum around announcement. What's new and what's changed since then? How's it going? How are customers reacting since that point in time? Well, I think that was the start of a lot of great things that have uh, been a momentum as we've actually started from April right through, even through to uh, this show here today. Um, we, we announced our HPE GreenLake for block storage and HPE GreenLake for file storage, as well as also the HPE Gre um, GreenLake for disaster recovery, um, which is based on the Zerto technology, which is where I came from. Um, and since then, it's been a continual momentum. If I think about um, the technology underneath is HP Electro MP, and I think at the show everybody's been hearing a lot about that. And we've had tremendous momentum. It's probably one of the fastest growing um, products that we've actually had at HP. I think we've got over a thousand deployments now. Um, and I think, as I say, that was the start in April. We've had about four launches over the past uh, six months. And um, starting off with um, file storage, we continued our momentum there, adding in support for NVIDIA GPUs, um, which really is accelerating AI scale. Um, and then we also introduced uh, SimpliVity into our uh, private cloud business edition. We then, um, also launched our Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault a little bit earlier on, and we added in Electra MP support in uh, June. And then, sorry, not June, yeah, June. But in May, we had a big launch where we um, announced our block storage, our next release, which is release four. So we've actually had one, two, three, four since April last year. And we introduced also our block storage for public cloud on AWS. And right. we've had the HP Timeless program, and we've enhanced that, and our Timeless program is where we've brought together a number of guarantees, such as our 100% data availability, as well as also our, our uh, risk-free program, and also our um, store more program as well, our guarantee with regards to the data uh, reduction of four, about four to one. But we added in free controller updates. Um, so that was significant. And then we also added in Electra MP support into uh, Private Cloud Business Edition. Wow, that's it? Um, well, I, could, I could carry well, on well, a little I mean, bit. That, I, that's, um, that's, that's, <laughs> I love the cadence. We've done a lot. Fantastic, yeah, thank you, for Caroline, for that, yeah. that, that, that overview. Mr. Rotoricio, yeah. you know a little bit about storage in the business. <laughs> what, what brought you to H, HPE? What's, what, what are you looking forward to? Maybe talk a little bit about the priorities from a high level. You know, I, I mean, I've, I answered this question the same way earlier, you know, what brought me to HP? I mean, uh, you know, I've worked for Fidel Russo in the past. He gave me a call and said, would you, would you take a look? And as I got engaged with, with the conversations, I liked what I saw, frankly. I thought a lot of good things were happening. It was something that I could jump into and add value, and, uh, and it's turning out that way, you know. We've got, Really good technology. I think we've got a, we've got a platform-enabled uh, uh, architecture that that doesn't exist elsewhere in the in the market, 
And as Caroline said, we're, we're seeing tremendous uh, momentum. And I would correct you on one thing. I think we've, we've actually shipped over, you know, close to 2,000 and we've installed 1,500 arrays. It keeps growing. <laughs> I keep track, I keep track. You keep track, that's And right. uh, no, I think, I think it's, you know, the Electra MP platform is going to be the basis for everything we go forward with and, uh, and it truly is differentiating. Yeah, I, I think, again, I had the advantage of talking with you all in uh, analyst sessions over the last couple days, which yeah. has been fantastic. And I, I think one of the things with all of the announcements that have been going on with the HPE private cloud AI yeah. and how you're part of that as well with El Electra and MP and all of that, but one of the things I, I, I kept in the back of my mind was that it's about hybrid, right? And it is. hybrid, and you kind of mentioned this with the announcement, you know, back in May with AWS yep. and things of that, it would seem like that's really a good fit for, hey, you're building it here, I need to move it there, I have all of this where it runs on that one OS in yeah. multiple places. It really does work out that way, and you know, it, it, when you think about hybrid by design, um, it, and it has meaning here. I worked at a place uh, years ago when yeah, not, nobody really knew what hybrid was, right? But I think it really does have meaning here. Um, it's, 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 um, you know, it's, it's taking the workloads where the data resides, it, whether it's on-prem, on the edge, uh, in the public cloud. And we're able to do that with a single OS and a single management plane. And I, you know, that's, a, that's another key advantage for customers they are going to get just uh, radically simplified and improved operational experience. Because everything they touch um, within HPE is going to have that Green Lake uh, operations, uh, you know, kind of console, uh, control plane, and, and it just, it's a radical simplification over what they're going to see from other folks. Well, you're managing it, you know, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, and it's the same interface. I mean, it's, it's one experience. Well, so that's what I wanted to get to, is, is that is something that customers have been asking for, look for, looking forward to for quite some time now. What is that experience like uh, between the clouds? Is it pretty much identical? Is that what, what mm -hmm. you're, you're saying? And yes, then, exactly. And then Antonio said something in the keynote that really resonated with me. He said, AI, Gen AI is a distributed workload. I went, uh-huh, right, yep. right on. And so storage by its very nature is, is distributed. Right. So as you think about bringing that experience to the edge, how should we think about that estate growing. Can I abstract all that complexity? Is that sort of in the cards for the future? Do you do sort of some of that already? How do you think about that from a architecture? Well, you know, from an architecture perspective, standpoint? I mean, you know, my, from my perspective, um, GreenLake Cloud uh, enables a cloud experience everywhere. And it, it enables the same cloud experience everywhere, whether you're in the on-prem or you're on the edge. And our architecture scale from small to medium to large. And now we've extended uh, you know, kind of an enterprise grade block system into the cloud, into the public cloud. So you know, it's a true hybrid experience. Um, you're, going to be able to, you're going to be able to apply uh, the, the AI pipeline and workloads wherever the data resides. And we're going to be able to solve that problem for you. So if I have on-prem block and I want to extend it to AWS Cloud, for example. I will mm -hmm. have high performance block storage, same exact experience, and it'll run on AWS if I wanted to, it'll run on-prem. Exactly. Like yep. You nailed it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or at the edge even, where, or where I edge. think where we're yeah. talking yeah. about inference and things of that nature, where I think when you start to get into AI, people want to bring it, uh, you want to bring AI usually to the data, but I, I think that's... Exactly, that, um, I mean, I think, and that's the answer. I mean, you know, you, you know, you know you've heard a lot yeah, I mean, it becomes a bit cliche, but you know, data has gravity, right? And and you you really need to bring the workloads uh, close to the data. And so, you know, we have a common our common disaggregated architecture um, that scales from small to large. So, if it's on the edge, we have systems that'll that'll meet it there. Um, and they're gonna, and at the same time, you're going to consume it. You're going to apply data services, and they're going to look exactly the same as to whether or not you know you, in a scaled up environment or all all the way into the public cloud. So when I, when I think of structured and unstructured data, I think structured, I think, I think transactions, I think database. Yep. When I think unstructured, I, I, AI seems to be, have a lot less structure Cause, in, it, yeah. in, in, its, in its data. How do you guys think about the, the delta between structured and unstructured? How are you handling that architecturally? 
I got to ask you, what about object? Where is that in the yeah. future? Maybe you could comment. So, so you know, our GreenLake for File product has has object, and it runs on top, and it runs on top of uh, the same Electra MP architecture. So it's disaggregated, um, high-speed NVMe uh, network, uh, you know, connecting compute nodes to uh, capacity nodes. You know, and the, and the real value there is, you know, you can you can scale compute capacity independently, and it, it really eliminates all that over provisioning that happens when you're dealing with a monolithic system. But to get back to your point, there's no question that AI uh, processing is happening in a, in the unstructured space, right? And uh, you know, there's a lot of effort and focus, you know, GPU direct, and it's it's mostly a file system. But you know, quite frankly, once you ramp uh, the, the content into the environment via a file system, the processing is typically happening in object. Yeah. Right? So you're mm -hmm. going to see a lot more of that. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. I think what's been interesting as well is that you, you got some certifications right out of the gate with NVIDIA, right? For Correct. the base pod and some of the Which other we things. We announced here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and I think that to me would seem like it's, it's really good from a, hey, we have Cray that's part of the fold and that's got a really rich history with AI, what I'll call traditional AI and ML. This would seem like a really good time with NVIDIA to be able to go to market and talk about how that base pod and how you're going forward with that. Has that been, have you seen a lot of traction as you made, I mean, the announcement was a couple days, you know, Well, yes, recently, the announcement was uh, this, this, this week. Yeah. So, um, and we're working with NVIDIA very closely with uh, go-to-market plans. So uh, you'll be seeing a lot more uh, from that, absolutely. You know, and technically we're looking for ways, and I, I just finished a meeting with NVIDIA, and you know, we're looking for ways to, you know, kind of accelerate and, and create value added uh, capabilities. So you're going to see from a storage perspective, much more forward looking uh, things coming out of us. Mm -hmm. It seems to me you could do a lot more in closer to the storage, especially with AI, bringing AI to the data I know, again, it's kind of a cliche, but also security, obviously you're doing a lot with encryption these days. How do you see that evolution of of being able to do more with, you know, closer to the data? Well, you know, well, clearly, um, you know, we, we've kind of stand behind the fact that, you know, hybrid by its very nature says that you kind of take the workloads where the data is. And, mm -hmm. and we've built a, a secure and resilient hybrid by design infrastructure. I mean, that's what, that's what GreenLake ha has done. And it's really well suited uh, for AI workloads because there you have to provide guardrails. You know you have to you have to ensure that you can bring the capacity and the compute to the to the step in the model, you know, step in the AI pipeline that you're that you that you need it there. And at the same time, you need to have a secure and resilient uh, environment. And and we have that built in with the data services that are available in GreenLake uh, yeah. Cloud Platform. And, and I, th I think one of the things that we're seeing from our side is we have a partner ETR, and in their data, uh, and they do tech spending intentions data, and one of the things that will be coming out pretty shortly is that they look at AI and the, the reasons why people aren't getting to production. And one of the things that popped up this, or will pop up in, in the July data, is really budgets. So TCO has to be a huge part of what people are looking and what customers are asking yeah. for. Absolutely. For the first time it showed up as a blocker. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it jumped, like it went from being like low single digits up to over 20%. So how do you see TCO playing out now, now that you've gone there with Electra and how, it, how you see that going forward? You know, in the AI space, I mean, I, you know, I think what we're seeing are, are, you know, we're seeing it even in HPE. You know, everybody has two types of AI projects. Help us understand how we can drive efficiency and operational benefit intern for two internal processes. Everybody, every company has one of those, or more, mm -hmm. one, more than one of those. And then, how do we how do we create value out of our data that actually enhances our, our you know our relationship with our customers and the products and services that we can deliver? So they really fall into those two camps. And I see, you know, from a TCO perspective. They tend to be really internally focused, you know? Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, air, you, know, cust, you know, budgets are strained, all of a sudden there's this new thing that you've got to kind of carve out funding for. And so, you know, we feel really good about the fact that we can deliver a lower cost of ownership from a platform-based approach, and others are really having to cobble together the pieces and parts. 
I like to look at it as a sort of, uh, when I think about the HP Electro and as you say about file storage and block storage, because it is unstructured but also structured. Um, isn't it, in, in the fact of your data that you need to bring into your models and what, having that one architecture, um, I, I, I look at it as the power of one. That's the way I sort of phrase it. Um, so you're yeah. starting to hit on some of the differentiators. I'd like to, for, to hear, in your words, how you guys think about the differences between yourselves, some of the other big system players, some of the other pure play storage players. Why do business with HPE? I think the, um, as I look at the uh, HP Electra MP uh, specifically, and goes back to what I just said about it's the power of one. Um, whereas when you're actually buying, whether it's uh, for your structured or your unstructured data, you've got a single architecture. And I think that's really powerful. The other thing too is all the announcements that we've made. So things such as the private cloud, uh, so your file, your block, your object, your, your private cloud, private cloud AI, um, and also the, the uh, uh, Serta Cyber Resilience Vault. It's all got fundamentally uh, the same architecture, which is the Electro MP. So that's a huge value to customers because you're not having to buy multiple different products um, and different operating systems to manage and everything else. It's a huge TCL. I mean, I can't spend all day managing LUNs. <laughs> yeah, <do> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Hey, yeah. No fun. Well, I, for I think an old storage guy. Come on. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's <laughs> really fun. I've been there as well. I mean, uh, on the customer side, I can tell you that I used to love my spreadsheets and yeah. doing that. But, <laughs> so, but, but I, I think part of it, and I, I think we saw it in some of Fidelma's, you know, some of the demos that went yeah. on during her keynote was, hey, I can go from it drops off on the dock all in one bundle to, hey, it's up and running and I can deploy yeah. KVM, I can deploy an OS, I can deploy KVM, and then I can get to containers and things of that nature. Yeah. There has to be coordination that happens between yourselves. Uh, we had Tony on from the yeah. GreenLake cloud platform earlier. I, how does that work in your world these days? I mean, it's it, you're not a pure play storage vendor, no. so like, no, there's listen, a lot of moving I, it's parts. It's interesting, and you know, it's actually, you asked the question like, you know, what did you think, and why did you come to HP? Um, the hybrid cloud organization has really brought together some, some unique pieces that it, initially you might say like, why are they together? But when you think about the platform, the, the, the GreenLake cloud platform, when you think about our private cloud business, my team uh, takes storage products to market, but they also supply storage products into the private cloud offerings. And um, you know we have we have a, a full menu of things that that are really allowing uh, HP to bring great technology together to solve customer problems. We, I think when you think about what happened with PCAI, and we were able to do that pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, it, it's inspired a bit by what we did with the private cloud business edition. This is a turnkey, full stack, cloud in a box. Um, you know, quick time to value for our customers. And here we did it again with PC for AI, different software, different workloads, um, compute that didn't exist, networking, so we took it to the next level. But the, the blueprint was kind of there. And, um, and it's all about, you know, as long as we stay focused on what customers need, and I think in the enterprise, these, these uh, solutions are very complex, so you see about three clicks to value, three clicks to inferencing kind of a thing, and that's really what you know, we're, we're trying to do. Solutions, keyword, I think, operative word, especially in this world of complicated AI. We're hearing a message from HPE this week of much more integrated solutions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still got to execute on compute and storage and networking and services and financial services, yeah, yeah. I get all that, uh, but I think one of the big value adds here is we've got solutions for you, all brings, brings it all together, um, and that's, that's big because the more storage you can include, more storage content, the better gross margins are. They're better than compute, <laughs> right? Even though we love Intel and NVIDIA, and storage, you get 50, 60% gross margin. That mix drops right to the income statement, yeah, the, the, and we love yeah. it. There's a little thing in there you know, called the, you know, the data management, data services yep. layer that, uh, that, that we, we have a lot of very smart people working on, right? So mm. we should get better profit for that. The value add yeah. over that, value that add. NAND is uh, substantial, so. Yeah. But it was something you said earlier about the fact that what's the differentiator, and I think the value of what HP brings. I mean, you've got the storage, you've got the compute, you've got the networking. 
just think, I mean, bringing that all together, the pure storage, sorry, the pun, but uh, the pure storage players, they don't have all of that. Mm -hmm. And they can, you've got one vendor that can deliver that. And, and this week alone, watching us sort of launch PCAI, that is a complete turnkey solution, the value to an organization is huge. And if you can green lake that, right, that's now an operating model that makes it a lot easier for customers to yeah. pay attention to other things that are more strategic. Yeah, exactly, yep. and I would, I would say this though, I mean, you know, the thing that I'm reinforcing with the team is it's great, we've got a platform enabled uh, capability, um, it is absolutely adds value, but these underlying technologies need to stand on their own. We need to have really good storage products, and, and I, we still see customers buying on the merits of the of the core technology and so you know we're gonna, we're marrying that up with the solutions we're marrying that up with um, all the cloud enabled data, data services and and that really uh, creates additional value but we really have to have good technology at the core I'm glad you brought that up because best of breed is, is still a thing people it is a want, thing people want best of breed mm -hmm. and I always ask can you be you know a, a, a portfolio company and best of breed it's a challenge age old challenge but you, you've, you've got to meet it and because uh, yeah, yeah, that's how you do. compete. So yeah, absolutely do. Guys, congratulations. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was oh, great to have you. It's been a pleasure. Thank it's you. Good it's to a pleasure be here. to talk with you guys. It's been a good, yeah. good show. More to come. Absolutely, yeah, yes. Big things, big things from HPE. We're excited. Yep. We're going to wrap up uh, day two here at HPE Discover. Dave Vellante, Rob Strecce, Rebecca Knight, John Furrier, Bob La Liberté in the house. Keep it right there. We'll be right back. Right after this short break, you're watching theCUBE from HPE Discover in Las Vegas, 2024.